to be regarded as a cult hero, which is an amazing thing. For me, it's, it's very humbling. I signed the season Watford actually got relegated. Mike King got the sack and Graham Taylor came in. Every player, that especially all the professionals, had to go and see and meet Graham Taylor for the first time. I knock on the door, Graham Taylor says, come in. So I walk in the room, and he's obviously got some notes written on his, on his, on his desk. And he goes, Luther Blissett, he says. Luther Blissett. Luther Blissett. With a name like that, son, you've got to be a star, haven't you? Last game of the season, I think we played um, Liverpool, who had won the league by then. Me and Rushy are quite close in goals. And I remember we got, we got a penalty and I took the penalties. And um, Rushy ran to Bruce Grobelar in the goal. And you could almost see him say, don't let him score because I want to be top goal scorer. You could almost see Rushy doing that. And put the ball down on the spot once in a half. Turned my back, walked away. Really just drew breath, made my decision where I was going to put the ball. Turned, ran and smashed it to the goalkeeper's right and then it went. And we beat them 2-1. Ended up winning the golden boot. Top goal scorer in England, but also top goal scorer in Europe that year as well. Graham says to me, just want a quick word. We've had an inquiry from a team in Europe that, you know, about, uh, about signing you. But I've told them they've got to come up with a million pounds before I let you speak to them. And um, so I don't, I don't think they'll be coming back. <laughs> what he said. Four or so days later, the phone goes. It's Graham Taylor on the phone. They've come back and they've offered a million pounds. So what do you want to do? You want to talk to them? I've gone, a million pounds. I didn't even ask what club it was, but that shows you how that sort of affects your brain. We met them the following week at the Hilton in Watford and it was AC Milan. But they never, they never concluded that day. So what well, they said, we'll meet again. That meeting took place in a tailor's in London. Their president, um, for, Mr. President Farina, he wanted to meet Elton John. And that's the reason why this second meeting, and it wasn't concluded the first time, to this day was still the most surreal thing in the world.